Okay, in this clip I'm going to go ahead and uh, side mill uh, the edges of the part, um, starting with rough, rough stock that I cut off of the uh, chop saw in the garage. And so I need to uh, square up the, the sides and uh, make it ready for me to hold the device. Um, I'm going to repeat this process on all four sides, but we'll skip that in the video. Um, <clears throat> basically I'm removing about a tenth of an inch from each side. Uh, what I'm also doing is uh, working the sides down to a, uh, a size that will let me cut the top of this in one pass when I use the face mill in the next process. Um, so that will make it a little bit simpler for me to program when I do the uh, facing cuts on the top of the stock. Went ahead and skipped uh, a couple of steps in between, and now we're going to finish off the last pass on the uh, on this side milling step. And again, this process is repeated on all four sides of the part. And uh, then I take a final finishing pass manually um, to to work the the stock down to the final dimension that I needed. Okay, now we're going to uh, go ahead and run the face mill, and uh, we're going to use the face mill to knock off about uh, two tenths of an inch of stock. This is a two and a half inch um, plastron face mill, um, 45 degree angle on the inserts, and uh, <coughs> we're moving at about uh, 25 inches a minute and about 20 thousandths the depth of cut. So uh, it's removing a pretty good, uh, pretty good chunk of stock here with each pass. It takes about 10 passes to get all the way um, through the programmed um, amount to remove, and then I, uh, once again, I used kind of a manual pass to finish off the dimension to exactly what it needed to be. It's one of my favorite. Uh, favorite tools to watch in motion because it leaves quite the rooster tail of metal as it, uh, as it passes through. Okay, skip the rest of the, uh, the roughing passes and now we're going to go on to the uh, final finishing pass after I've measured the, uh, the final amount to remove. And uh, this one's moving at a much slower clip of about uh, 12 inches a minute. And these are using uh, just basic inserts. Uh, not the aluminum specific one, so the finish isn't, uh, isn't quite as, as impressive as it could be, but um, actually overall it looks pretty good quality. And so now the part is down to the proper dimension on, uh, on thickness as well. Okay, the next operation will be to uh, pep drill a 3 16th inch hole uh, through the long, long section of the part. Um, this is going to be for a bolt that I need to uh, run through there, kind of acts as a uh, pivot shaft for this, uh, what's going to end up being a grinder table. Um, so this is uh, the machine peck drilling its way through that material. Kind of a pretty decent decent amount for that drill to, to get through, but uh, went all the way through and the dimensions were actually pretty good, no wandering, so uh, I was pretty pleased with it. Right, this is one of the longer sections of the video here. This is the actual uh, machining out the uh, majority of the features of the underside of the, uh, the table pivot here. Um, eventually what we're going to be doing is creating two, uh, two about quarter inch ears um, where the hole goes through the part. And uh, those two ears are used to uh, secure the, the grinder table to a uh, bolt that's, that slips through. Um, the rest of this material is just being removed um, to kind of work down the uh, size of the part itself. I didn't want it to be quite this thick. Um, so we're going to slowly, basically what we what you would refer to as extrude those ears, they're going to uh, slowly come out as we remove all this metal. Um, the end mill I'm using here is a 3 8 inch end mill. Um, running as fast as the mill will run, about 3,000 to 3,100 RPM. And we're going a tenth of an inch depth of cut and about 25 inches a minute. Um, and the width of cut is actually about a quarter inch, so it's, it's working pretty good. I 
I'll show this first pass of uh, cutting off the first uh, first level of the metal here, and then uh, the next uh, we'll pop on down to the uh, some of the final passes. Yeah, I believe this is pretty well, uh, pretty well getting towards the end of it. Uh, at this point, we're taking pretty small, I think about thirty-one thousandths of an inch. And then one last pass to uh, finish the final dimension of the part for the uh, the back half there. Okay, now we're going to uh, enter the portion of the program where we actually uh, bring out the ears. Uh, so we're going to cut out the, uh, the section in between those two quarter inch ears. Um, this time, because the end mill had to uh, make its way all the way through in a full width slot, um, I went ahead and reduced the depth of cut to 50 thousandths. And uh, so that doubles the number of passes it has to make to, to do this, but um, I don't like to cut through a deep slot. Um, that close to my finished dimensions. <coughs> All the other parameters are pretty much the same. Okay, now we skip some of the rest, and um, we're kind of towards the middle of the uh, program here. We're actually breaking through into the uh, into the drilled hole. You can you can see the uh, the hole starting to break through now as we cut. Um, we'll finish this level, and then we'll skip on down to the uh, final passes. You can also kind of see the uh, the ear starting to form now. Okay, now we're going to do the uh, final pass. So again, this is about a uh, 30 thousandths of an inch um, on this final pass. Uh, it's actually one thousandth of an inch higher than the rest of it, uh, mostly because I didn't want the end mill dragging around on the, uh, the other portion of the part that we just finished cutting. So uh, it's about one thousandth of an inch higher. It doesn't really make any difference for my application, but um, I still like to have the end mill dragging around as I move. Alright, so we're finished with the roughing part. This next section is actually uh, the finishing passes on the two ears after uh, measuring them real quickly with some calipers to make sure everything was good. Uh, this is going to be a slow climb milling finishing pass to take off the last ten thousandths of an inch off the uh, edges of those. And we'll repeat the same process on the other ear. Moving at about uh, 10 inches per minute here. And now finishing is done. Here we just get to kind of an overview of what the, uh, what the finished part looks like. Um, <coughs> what's left to go is a few uh, drilled holes um, so that I can secure the uh, actual 
interchangeable table onto the top of the pivot and uh, then we'll have a finished part. This next section is going to be uh, drilling the uh, through hole for the cap head screws that we're going to use to secure the uh, table to the top of the pivot. Um, these are just a little bit shy of a quarter inch, I think they're at 0 0.029. Um, so they're for 1032 cap head screws. So first we do the, uh, the through hole for the body. We do a quick peck drill. in all three positions. And that's done. Okay, next we're going to uh, cut the counter bores for the tops of those uh, socket cap screws uh, so that it sink into the uh, sink into the bottom a little bit and don't uh, don't stand up completely off the bottom. This is about a uh, 0.150 inches deep, uh, and this is in circular interpolation on the uh, with the X and Y table. It goes ahead and cuts the little circular pocket that we need. That's the final step. All right, and here's the finished part. Try to give you kind of an idea of what the uh, what the overall thing looks like. You're looking at it from the bottom side, um, so the the top side of it is actually facing downward. This is for the uh, the grinder table, and uh, I'll try to pop in a picture at the end of the video of what this actually all assembles into when it's uh when it's complete.